frog fish. <laughs> that was fun. Decent chunk. Skipping frogs under docks. We get her back. That was fun. You can see right here we've got a bunch of weeds leading right up to this dock. Like almost to the point where it's carpeted on the bottom here. And if you were to throw anything else under that dock outside of maybe like a weightless Senko, you're probably gonna get all gummed up with these weeds. So a really good way to fish these docks that are really quite shallow. I mean, that thing, there's maybe only a foot or two of water under it is to throw a frog. And what you're dealing with typically under these docks that are full of vegetation around the edge is there's gonna be a bare spot underneath those docks. And that's the ambush point for these fish. And they'll just sit in those bare spots and wait for something to swim out. There we got him. <laughs> he's not big, but he's fun. <laughs> Missed him, threw back in. If you miss one on a frog, always throw back in there. Almost two o'clock, one, two o'clock, which is gonna be, you know, that's your prime time for fishing a frog around docks. We got shade lines. We got a little bit of clouds moving in now, um, but still decent shade lines up under these docks. There's no doubt you can catch them um, in the morning hours or late evening hours when your shadows aren't as big but your chances of catching them under these docks are generally gonna be best, you know, during that 11 o'clock to three, four o'clock frame. You're gonna up your odds. Your shadows are just gonna be better. Those fish position better that time of day. So here's an example of what it looks like under the dock. So this homeowner just pulled the dock out. You can see it up on the bank here. And this was the end piece right here. And look at all the eelgrass around it. And then we've got a nice bare spot. You can actually see some bluegill and a little bass down in here, but it creates a beautiful ambush point for these fish. You know, outside of the dock, you would never know that there's much depth in here. And we can see that now, now that they've pulled the dock off it creates this beautiful open spot, eelgrass all around it, almost like a little home, eat little ecosystem for these fish. You can see even up above here, there's a bunch of sand where the walkway used to be, and then a bunch of eelgrass all around it. And that's really what we're targeting on these docks with this frog, is we're skipping into these little open areas where those fish are sitting, they're ambushing our frog. You know, from the outside looking in, we would never know there's much water at all. It just looks like it's a carpeted mat of eelgrass on the outside. But when a homeowner pulls their dock like that, you can really see the entire habitat that those fish are sitting on and relating to. And a frog's a really good way to skip under there and get to that open spot past the eelgrass that's matted around it and target those fish that you normally wouldn't be able to target with just your standard Texas rig or jig. Decent frog fish. He chased it right off. <laughs> Look at that. You think they want that thing? That is so cool. And I think they're just chewing on bluegills up there. He got it really good. And get him back. Nice chunk. That one was actually further out from the dock. We we had skipped up underneath there. We had kind of worked it out to the edge, and he came out and grabbed it. You know, you're trying to imitate prop. Oh, there's another one. A couple things, either a bluegill or a frog. <laughs> it's so fun. Another decent one. Not huge, but man, they're fun. And get it back. Now, the frog we're using is the it's a Terminator frog. It's the biggest one in the lineup. They've got a small walking frog, a popping frog and then just the regular size Terminator. And we've trimmed the legs up a little bit to make it a little bit smaller profile. Um, and you need a frog with some decent weight to really carry it up and under these docks. 
If you skip with too light of a frog, you're not gonna get the distance and the carry that you need. You know, real bright and orange and yellow, and those are gonna be colors I'm gonna use in bodies of water that have more of a algae bloom stain to them or a mud. This color I'm gonna be using typically, you know, in your clear water situations, especially when you're fishing them in open water like we are today. When you throw a frog on a mat or rice or a lily pad areas, I don't think that color matters near as much as when you're throwing it in open water situations. Pick a frog that has some decent weight to it. It's gonna allow you to skip a lot easier. A small one. <laughs> Three of them under there. Not a big one, but fun size. Man, he got it really good. As I was saying, another thing with skipping docks with a frog or a jig or whatever you're skipping under these things, if you're throwing on a bait caster, you are bound to get some backlashes. That's just gonna be part of it. You've kind of just gotta accept that. Don't get frustrated when you get them. Just pick them out, keep moving down, keep an easy pace. Don't get in a hurry. You're gonna get backlashes when you do this stuff. It's just part of it. Um, you know, with time and practice, you can get to the point where you can get pretty efficient. You're not picking out a backlash every time. But to skip a frog, you gotta keep that bait caster pretty, pretty loose. The settings gotta be such that that line's coming off the spool pretty easily for you to skip these things. And you're gonna have to have a pretty controlled thumb to not get a backlash every time. But believe me, I get them every time I skip a jig or a frog under a dock. It's just, it's just part of it. Uh, I prefer a little bit different setup than if I was making a long bomb cast across the, you know, a lily pad field or a mat of milfoil or coontail or duckweed. You know, I'm using just a, a shorter rod, it's seven foot, and this is just a medium heavy. Um, so it's not a broomstick by any means. I'm not using, you know, typically I'm using like a 7.4 heavy. Around docks, it's always gonna be a seven foot medium heavy rod. A couple of reasons for that. I feel like I can skip a lot better with a shorter rod. And the reason for the medium heavy is when I'm setting the hook on these fish, I'm not very far away from them. And it's open water situation. I'm not having to drag them through a bunch of vegetation. And I feel like I get a better hookup to land ratio with a medium heavy on a short range cast. I don't feel like I blow those fish mouth open near as much with a medium heavy versus if I was throwing a heavy rod. Uh, 50 pound braid and get your favorite reel that you like to skip with. This happens to be a really old school Shimano. I love this reel, I have a lot of confidence in it. Um, you know, I've, I've skipped with this reel for several years now and it's just what works for me. So find the reel that you like best to skip with um, put something in your hands that you're confident with and that's going to be your best bet to be making accurate skip casts under these docks. Lining yourself up properly in the boat to make sure you're getting the right angle on these fish is super important. I read this missed one. I try and do my best to imagine, you know, where that bite's gonna come from and where is my boat and hook set in relation to that. And what I mean is, you know, for example, on a spot like this, we've got a walkway that shoots back. If I'm skipping under that walkway from this position and my boat's going this way, if I get that bite, you know, my line's gonna be wrapped around that pole on the right and my chances of landing that fish are not as good. So what a better option would be is as I'm, as I'm going this way, Instead of casting between those poles, cast to the right of it and work your bait out that way. That way, if you do get a bite, you're in better position to land that fish and get a good hook on them so your line isn't wrapped around that pole. And I'm constantly using my raptors when I'm doing this. You know, if I feel like I'm approaching a dock too fast, instead of turning the trolling motor around and blowing 
water towards that dock to slow me down. Just hit your raptor buttons, it'll stop you right where you want to be, and then you're not disturbing that dock. We're in really shallow water. It's only a foot or two deep here. The last thing I want to do is point my trolling motor towards that dock and blow water towards it and potentially spook the fish that I'm trying to catch. So, you know, angles on the dock, depending on how your boat's moving and the cast you make is really important. And then also using your raptors to slow your pace down, make sure you're, you know, lining yourself up perfectly for the cast that you want to make instead of blowing out that dock with your trolling motor before you get there. Small guy. That one ate it when he was just sitting there. One thing to keep in mind when you're fishing a frog around these docks is you know, your cadence with the frog is a big deal. I think, it, you know, you're, you're dealing with trying to tease a fish in open water. You're not just kind of reeling this thing across mats or across pads. A lot of times these fish are getting a pretty good look at your bait. And so my typical process is, you know, skip it under there and let that thing sit for just a second before you start twitching it. If you can imagine a fish sitting under there, all of a sudden they see this thing skipping across the surface and it catches their attention, let it settle under there. And a lot of times your first couple twitches is when they're gonna eat it. And if it doesn't happen right away, you know, create some slack in your line so that you can twitch that frog in one place or as close to one place as possible without moving it forward. You wanna try and keep that frog in the strike zone as long as possible. You know, the difference between, like if you're fishing a big mat of grass and you're trying to locate fish in a vast area of grass with a frog, a lot of times you're working it really pretty quickly across that mat until you find where those fish are sitting at. With a frog, when you're skipping docks, you wanna work it generally pretty slow they're getting a pretty good look at it and you're just twitching it in front of their face trying to make them react. Definitely take your time and try and twitch it back and forth. Gosh, that's a little better one. Oh, that was awesome. Gosh, that's a nice one. Frog. <laughs> that is so fun. Healthy one. You can see we've just got absolutely carpeted weeds right up to that dock. You wouldn't be able to throw anything else underneath there but a frog. And that thing was in about a foot of water up there in the shade. Perfect dock to be throwing a frog on.